Hello, today I'm looking at M4 June 2012. This is question two. I can see that this question is testing me on relative motion. So I have that ship A is moving on a constant speed of eight on a bearing of 150 degrees. At noon, a second ship B is six kilometers from A on a bearing of 210. So that tells me that if A is here, B is on a bearing of 210 degrees, so B is going to be over here, and the distance initially between them is going to be 6 kilometers. Then B is moving due east, uh, so that's that way, so on a bearing of 090, at a constant speed. Okay, at a later time, B is 2 root 3 due south of A. Now, um, as all of the angles are quite nice, because this angle here will be 30 degrees, um, <clears throat> I think I'd be tempted to try to do this question in vectors. Uh, because when they give you something like this, that one particle is due south or due east or west or whatever of another particle, that lends itself to looking at the I components or the J components. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'll begin by writing down an expression for A's position. So if we do everything relative to A, because it keeps talking about uh, the bearing from A, uh, two point sorry two root three kilometers south of a so if basically I make a will be the origin then a's position at time t will be where it was in the beginning which was zero zero plus t multiplied by a's velocity now a's velocity was eight on a bearing of 150 so uh, that means that we have 8 going in this direction. A bearing of 150 means that here we would have 150. And so here we would have 30 degrees. So this will give you a positive I component of uh, 8 sine 30 and a negative j component of 8 cos 30. So the position of a at any time is going to be half 8, which is 4t, and uh, half of 8, <coughs> which again is 4 times root 3, so minus 4 root 3t in the j direction. Doing something very similar for B, B's position is where it was in the beginning compared to this origin, which will be uh, 6 sine 30, but it will be a negative 6 sine 30 in the I direction, and then also a 6 cos 30, negative again, as it's uh, everything is relative to here, and B is to the left and down, plus T times the velocity of B, which we don't know. <clears throat> uh, however, because we know that B is moving due east, uh, that means it's only going to have a I component of whatever this speed is and it will have no j component. So simplifying b's velocity, I get half of negative 6, which is negative 3, plus vt in the i direction, and in the j direction I just get this, which is negative 3 root 2. <clears throat> so at some later time, they tell you that b is 2 root 3 due south of A. So what that tells you is when one of them is due south, the implications are 
that their i components will be equal and they told you um, that the uh, that b is 2 root 3 south of a so that tells you that the j components will differ by 2 root 3 so if we begin by looking at the uh, J components because that's what I have the most information about if I try to begin by equating the I components I have two unknowns T and V so I'm not going to be able to work that out so I'm going to begin by using this distance of 2 root 3 so I know that 2 root 3 is going to be equal to uh, this minus this uh, so I oh dear sorry that's a root 3 because that came from cosine 30 sorry right so uh, here I end up with root 3's everywhere so I can cancel everything by root 3 here I end up with plus 3, so I shall subtract 3 from both sides and end up with negative 1 equals negative 4t, and therefore I get that t is 1 quarter. Now, when t is 1 quarter, uh, let's have a look at what's happening to the i components. Now, I know that the i components are equal at this time so I know that 4 times a quarter equals negative 3 plus a quarter of v so <clears throat> here I end up with 1 equals negative 3 plus v over 4 so then I shall add 3 to both sides and multiply both sides by 4 so I end up with v is 16 so now I'm ready to actually start doing uh, looking at this different position which is the finding the time when b will be due east of a so The implication of this part of the question that B will be due east of A. So they began it in this position with A here and B here. And then if B ends up being east of A, then B's motion relative to A is going to be along this line and it's going to end up here. So b will be due east of a implies that the j components will be equal so if the j components are going to be equal then we can look at these two things and we know that minus 4 root 3 t is going to be equal to uh, minus 3 root 3 well, let's rewrite this uh, and so therefore we can see dividing both sides by root 3 dividing both sides by negative 4 we can see that t is 3 quarters now they said find the time at which b will be due east of a so again they don't want the time as in how much time has passed they want the time as in something o'clock now everything in this question began at noon this time is measured in hours so therefore the time at which uh, B will be due east 
of A is going to be 1200 hours plus uh, 45 minutes, which is 12.45. Okay, in 24 hour time. Then part II, they ask for the distance between the ships at that time. So the distance between the ships Um, we can get by putting that value of t into here. Now, as we know that the j components are going to be equal, one's here and one's here, all I need to do is look at the i components. So if I pop in that t is 3 quarters in here, I get 4 times 3 quarters, which gives me 3. So the i component of a is 3. If I pop um, 3 quarters in for the value of t here and I found that v was 16, then I end up with negative 3 plus 16 times 3 quarters. So here I end up with uh, 16 divided by 4 is 4. 4 times 3 is 12. 12 plus 3 sorry, 12 plus negative 3 gives me 9. So therefore, the distance between the ships as the i component of, of this one is 3 and the i component of this one is 9, the, distan the distance is going to be 9 minus 3, which is 6 kilometres. Okay, I... I hope you found that solution helpful. Uh, do click like if you liked it. Good luck.